Hey everybody, welcome to another Office Hours with me, Matt Groves. Thanks for hanging out in my office, my virtual office here on Twitch. And uh, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out. Make sure I'm not muted. That seems good. All right, so uh, I'm going to uh, finish up the JSON dashboard stuff. I've actually already uh, finished the tests and deployed it, so I'll walk through some of that. Um, and we can use that to add some of the raid and defend stuff by the means to add. Um, also got some new lighting set up here. I moved the camera a little bit, so I'll just make sure it looks okay. Okay, all right. And and uh, the other thing I need to do is, uh, as you'll see in the events coming up here, I've just been accepted to a virtual conference, a new virtual conference called CouchCon, CouchCon Live. Not related to Couchbase. However, I have submitted a Couchbase session to it. So I have got to pull together a uh, slide deck and presentation notes and, and uh, prepare for that. It's coming up pretty soon. It's Kevin Griffin. What's going on, Kevin Griffin? Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for showing up. Um, so I'm, I may work on some PowerPoint today. Uh, you get a little peek behind the curtain of the kind of... Uh, stuff I usually do with preparing for events, although it's going to be a bit of a compressed timeline because the event's coming up so quickly. That's fine because I'm, I'm not going to be um, researching brand new material. I'll just be sort of presenting little bits and pieces from other places and probably creating some new slides, but it'll be the same sort of material that I, I have before. Twitch needs a now playing PowerPoint option. Hmm, <laughs> people love PowerPoint. And speed, speed runs in PowerPoint. That's what we need, PowerPoint speed runs. All right, so let's go through the normal plugs here. Feel free to ask questions. This is a question-friendly channel. Please go ahead. Anything you see, whether it's PowerPoint-related or not, uh, anything that comes to mind about coding or databases or whatever, just feel free to ask. I'm, I'm very responsive to the chat and questions in this channel. And it's Calvin. What's going on, Calvin? Good to see you here. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, Calvin, a.k.a. Norm, the norm of this channel. So uh, yeah, feel free to ask questions, uh, anything. There's no such thing as a stupid question. This is sort of a personal motto of mine, passed down by my father, if you want to put it that way. Uh, ask questions. Okay, uh, Team Live Coders. So I'm a member of Team Live Coders. Try not to rub it in here, uh, Kevin. I know you're working on it. Uh, but I, I do want to promote my team anyway. Here we are. Uh, this is Team Live Coders. You go to Twitch slash Team slash Live Coders. A lot of us streaming right now. This must be the busy time of the week for Live Coders. Uh, as you can see, there's 149 of us total. Uh, so chances are a lot of us will be active at any one given time. But you can go check out Twitch slash Team slash Live Coders. Find someone interesting here. You can browse through all the different options. InstaFluff's a great one. One of my favorites. Uh, and you can see what InstaFluff's up to. Brian Lagunas. Things like that. So... Uh, we're going to come back to this page later. Brian Lucas always got some nonsense going on, on the screen. Always up to some shenanigans there. We're going to come back to the screen later and we're... Screen? Screen? Later, and we're going to raid... Eh, possibly raid one of these team members. We'll see how it goes. Okay, what else? Oh yeah, and if you're interested in uh, Live Coders, the team specifically, you can actually go to livecoders.dev slash members and you can get some more details about the team members and what they're streaming. I'm a little distracted because my family's out there in the sunroom putting up some curtains. So don't mind me. But you can go here and just see, just browse through what people are doing. Not everyone's updated their uh, profile, but you can see the different keywords of stuff that they do. So there's like Ardalis and Steve Smith and all these different social medias and whatnot. You can get all the information there. There's, there's Calvin right there. Got some Blazor, got some Xamarin Forms. That's a good one because he just uh, recently, although it's not... I mean, less and less recently, uh, got a Xamarin Forms app into production successfully. So definitely the guy you want to talk to there. Uh, but lots of people here. So I recommend following these people. In fact, I know Calvin doesn't do much streaming these days. Uh, but when he does, you'll definitely want to be there for that. So I'll give him a shout out as a fellow team member. Uh, it's, you know, for Calvin, for me, it's all about quantity over quality. For Calvin, it's all about quality. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's see, what else? Um, 
There's another list. You can go. We're bringing the podcast back. Well, yeah, Calvin says we're bringing the podcast back, so we'll at least live stream some of that. That'll be fun. The, uh, that is the .NET Bytes podcast. Uh, all right, so uh, Awesome Developers Streaming List. This is on GitHub slash BNB slash Awesome Developer Streams. And this is a big text file that people can submit themselves to as, as uh, developer streams, live coding, whatever. And you can just do a control F here, search for keywords. Maybe you can search for Kevin Griffin, for instance, and see that he's... We did this last time, right? So uh, Calvin this time. So there's Calvin, and you can find all his links here and whatnot, and the Twitch and what he streams about. And if you're also getting into live coding, developer streaming, whatever, ma building, making stuff, you can go and submit yourself to this uh, repo as well. So it's a good place to start if you're looking for people to follow that share your interests or you're looking for to learn new technology, you can find people who are, who are using it uh, on a regular basis. Two great places to start. Okay, what's next? Bitly slash GrovesTube. You can go here to find all the past... Um, it's live streams, videos, and the various clips and highlights and things that I've made of those streams. Uh, go to bit.ly slash GrovesTube. They're all there on YouTube. Feel free to leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. I feel like someone did leave a comment or something recently, so I need to check on that because I always promise that I will talk about those on the stream. Um, I might be wrong. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm wrong. It was a comment. It was a reply to somebody else's YouTube video. Uh, but anyway, so yes, uh, if you have a uh, question, comment, leave it there on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hello, how are you? If you're watching it uh, 2x speed, hello, how are you? All right, upcoming events. I will be presenting at the GDG Oslo group. That's May 5th. That's coming up very soon. So the totally virtual events, you can go ahead and go to that meetup link there. Let's just, let's just see uh, how many people have signed up for it so far. I haven't checked this in a, in a while. 58 people signed up so far. That's really cool. Um, usually I'd expect about half those people to show up. Uh, but in uh, these days when everything's virtual, that might be a, a pretty big group. So I don't know if there's a limit, um, but I, if I were you, I wouldn't wait. Get in there and you're going to, we're going to talk about JSON data modeling in document databases, something that is very important to me. CouchCon, I just mentioned this one. Again, not affiliated with CouchBase, lest you be confused, but it's, it's a virtual conference that you can participate on from your couch, hence the name CouchCon. And this is being put on by a uh, great community uh, person, uh, Christopher Sauer and others. I, but he's, I think he's maybe the, the point, uh, running point on this one. But uh, they haven't posted my details yet. I know that I'm speaking, but they haven't posted their full details yet. But I will be presenting, uh, uh, well, maybe we'll talk about that today. I'll work on the presentation for that. But it'll be nine Something like nine things you can do for free with Couchbase server. So uh, that's what I will be presenting on there. And I had to put Couch in it because it's CouchCon. I had to put Couchbase in the title. I thought that was appropriate. SQL Saturday happening on May 16th. Talked about that to death on the stream, but definitely want to sign up for that one. I'm going to go check that out. NDC Oslo, same thing. Live Coders Conference coming up on June 20th. So that's what's on my calendar that I can think of so far. Uh, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything, but those are the events that are coming up. So today, I wanna go back over some of the JSON dashboard stuff I worked on Tuesday. I got those to pass. I created some sanity checking for JSON. It's still not perfect, uh, but again, for my, for my purposes, it's basically just being used by me, uh, or it's just being, hypothetically, it's just being used by the person who's doing the streaming, and it's not for a general audience to use. It's fine. Uh, I wrote some unit tests for it. I actually went back and forth on different unit tests, came up with something that I'm pretty happy with. Uh, Pluralsight, you know, this is something I've got as a maybe in a future thing. I'm working on a Pluralsight course right now. I thought about sharing some of that process on the Twitch stream, but I know that they're very cautious about uh, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, because, you know, they, they, don't, they don't want people just putting out their stuff for free out there, right? They have lots of people already doing piracy and things and they want to be super careful with that. So I'm, I'm working with my 
Pluralsight managers on that to see what would be acceptable and what's not acceptable. So that might be happening soon. But I'm starting to wrap up my uh, my first course. At least, you know, I've never done this before. So I think I'm coming towards the end. I don't know. There might be a long way to go. And then I thought, uh, if we don't spend too much time on the JSON dashboard stuff, I'll work on the, the slides, work on some... And there might be some code involved with that too. I have, haven't decided quite yet whether or not um, we're going to show code because this particular event is... I've got about 35 to 45 minutes of time. Uh, so I don't know if uh, showing a lot of code is going to be the best use or, or maybe I want to de-emphasize the slides and just show code. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'll have to think about that. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Uh, let's go now to... Uh, I'm going to go over to my dashboard. I'm just bringing it up off the screen here because there is a secret code involved. Okay, there we go. So there's the dashboard. You can see it hasn't looked doesn't look much different than last time, but this is actually deployed to production. You can see Matt's Twitch bot up here, um, which you can go to if you want to. It's not going to let you do anything. You're going to get an un unauthorized exception or message, something like that. I, I could just probably show you that, actually. This is what you'll get if you try to go. Uh, yeah, you get a 401 error, right? Because you, you don't have the authorization. All right, uh, so I don't need to talk about authorization too much other than I know this is in production and I know you can't get to it and, and mess with this. So uh, maybe a little zoom, zoom skis so you can see. But I've got... Uh, three sets of data here. I've got the home page stuff, which are the badges that you just saw up here on top of the screen earlier. Uh, you know, there are plugins for Streamlabs to do this kind of stuff, but it's also, you know, sometimes I just want to build it myself and I can have more control and customization over it, things like that. So that's the badges that show up there for Twitch, LinkedIn, GitHub, and, and Twitter. And then these are what I'm calling static content commands, which is kind of ironic because they're dynamically defined, but they are it's just basically static content. So if you type in bang Couchbase or bang what is Couchbase, this is a message that will be broadcast to the channel. So I just did it right there. You can see that's what it did. So that's what I want to do in terms of a, uh, a another command I want to add here, which I can do without having to recompile or create another uh, chatbot command. I'm just going to call this one defend. And what should the content be? Well, that is the question, right? So uh, I think uh, Calvin ha has, has a pretty good head for defense here. So something like this is what I think I want the defend to say. So we're just going to copy that and paste that in here. Oh, and by the way, you can see the little uh, emotes show up on the screen now. I added that. That's a Streamlabs thing I added. It was really simple to just throw it in there. So whenever someone uses an emote, it'll fly around on the, on the screen. Hey, yeah. so that would be the defend command. So I'm going to add that one. And I think I also want to add a, uh, a raid for the horde. <laughs> command uh, raid. Actually, I have a picture of my son. It makes a pretty good for the horde face. Maybe I should use that one as an emote. Okay, uh, so what I usually do for raids is I say uh, bada bing. I usually post this in the channel, bada bing. Bada boom, it's a raid. And I want to intersperse this with some of my emotes. Some of my new emotes as well. So I've got these two here. These are new ones. Um, so I'll put those at the end, I think. But I want to have plenty of Calvin head in there. That's, that's awkward phrasing. Plenty of Calvin's head in there. Bada bing, bada boom, it's a raid. Maybe one more bada bing, bada boom in there. Something like that. Okay, so if I hit save all, it updates. So now if I type in, if we're, let's say later on today, I'm ready for a raid, I'll just post this in the channel and there you go. And I'll say copy and paste, uh, copy and paste this message if you are a, um, what'd you call it, subscriber. And you can paste that into the channel that we're raiding. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious about something. I haven't tried this, so I'm going to see if I have two of the same command in there. 
because I want to kind of have a message. Copy, copy this and paste into the chat of the channel we're going to raid. If I have two of them, what happens? <laughs> Let's see. I just picked the first one. Okay, interesting. All right. I actually did not plan uh, any of that, so... Uh, I'll just put those instructions here. Copy and, copy and paste. I'll just say copy this. That's probably enough in instructions there. So I'm doing no recompiling or anything. This is all just updating a document in Couchbase uh, with all these commands. And I can add additional commands as I want to. I can keep adding more commands, um, uh, you know, as long as they just have static content, right? There's no, no templating or anything like that involved yet. I could add templating in the future. I actually did add a templating engine to this chatbot um, recently, like a little string templating engine that we could use to, you know, put in the username or channel name or whatever else from a template. But uh, we're not there yet. Okay, and then the last thing here is the uh, profiles, which I mentioned before. This is just a list, and these go to the profile editor that I already created. But these are the ones that add that I can use. Right now, all they basically do is add a shout-out message, uh, which hardly gets used these days, um, and also adds the uh, little video fanfare that you saw that Calvin had when he arrived. Or at least when he arrived in the chat. Um, so just list those, and it'll take me off uh, if I click on one of those go over to the individual page. So yeah, not super beautiful because I'm not much of a designer, but very functional. In fact, let me show you some of the uh, validation. So if I were to go off the rails and put some cowboy JSON in here that isn't going to match anything, right? Um, I don't know why I do that. Maybe I was just, maybe I made a typo or something, right? But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save all and you see I get an error message that says that doesn't look like valid JSON for static content commands because there is no foo property in there. Oh, thank you for the host there, Kevin Griffin. Pretty cool. I like the berries and cream guy. Thank you for the host. Much obliged. I don't, I don't know if, I think I should have, do I have one Kevin Griffin on my auto host list? If not, I should uh, because you're not on the team yet. So I wouldn't automatically host you unless I went in there and specified it. So I'm gonna have to do that. Got to host one Kevin Griff. Oh, I should probably shout him out as well. One Kev Griff. Always have fun time in Kevin's channel. Go check him out on Twitch. He'll eventually be on the team, I assume. I'm not in charge of those things, but I, I just think it's inevitable. So go there at twitch.tv slash one Kev Griff. Give him a follow. He's looking for the last few follows to help him get on the team. So highly recommend you go and, and do that. Uh, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait while you go and follow Kev Griff. One Kev Griff. Okay, I think I've waited enough. That should be enough time. All new followers will get a hug. Oh, there you go. Get a little hug skis. So anyway, this this is this validation is really from a social distance. That's a virtual hug, if you will, a remote hug. This validation is all it's doing is just doing a sanity check on the JSON because I've got the object in such a raw JSON format here. You know, I could botch it potentially. So I want to make sure that uh, anything I put in here, I want to have the flexibility of editing JSON but I also want it to conform to a C-sharp object. Uh, I don't have anything beyond JSON sanity checking. I need to add some validation, right? So um, maybe badges is required, for instance, or you know, has to have at least one item in there, or commands has to have at least one item. Validation like that, I don't have that in place yet, but I could add that. Low priority for me because this is a completely admin only dashboard. All right, so let me show some of the code off for this and you can go check it out. The code, by the way, I believe, yep, it's on GitHub there. It's uh, Matt's Twitch bot. Feel free to use that bot for whatever you'd like. And if you have a, an eye towards the design, feel free to overhaul the dashboard or the profile editor with 
a bootstrap or you know, what, what's what's that other one these days? Um, the new CSS framework that I've heard people talk about. Oh, crikey. I can't remember. There's, there's, a, there's a couple. Or, you know, give it a, give it a front end. If you want to, give it a front end like a, a tailwind. Yep, that's it, tailwind. Thank you, Calvin. If you want to give it a, a, a spa front end, knock yourself out. But I, I probably need to help you get uh, create some rest endpoints. So if you want that, happy to do it. Uh, just open an issue on the, on the uh, case and say what rest endpoints you need. I'll create them, and then you go to town. Okay, so I want to show you the um, dashboard controller. So this is what I ended up with. So I used to have some string null or empty checks in here. And what I found was when I added this is sane JSON for type extension method, which was an extension method to begin with. But when I added that, it, it kind of, I was able to, to capture um, this, the is null or empty uh, in there as well. Right, so basically, I'm not saying is valid JSON. I'm just saying is sane JSON for a given type. All I'm doing is it null or empty. So an empty string, I think that's valid JSON, totally valid JSON. It's not sane JSON in the context of a context of an object, but it is valid JSON. So I'm checking that here. Then what I do is I run the given JSON, deserialize it into the given type, and then serialize it back out to a string. So I'm sort of running it in and out of C sharp. And then what I can do is I can take those two strings and compare them using Newton soft here, this deep equals, because there could be spacing differences, right? Formatting differences, white space and things. I run this through here and say, okay, are they equal? If they're equal, then that means whatever data I put in as raw JSON made total sense and matched up with my C sharp object. And then these are gonna be equal. It's just a quick sanity check I could put into place to make sure I didn't, you know, with my massive sausage fingers, mess up or, or make a typo or something in my JSON. Um, actually, one thing I didn't check, I wonder what happens if I put an invalid JSON in here. That's entirely possible as well. That I'm just, it's just a string that I'm submitting. So it could be invalid JSON. And I'm wondering if instead of string, I could use like a, like a Newton soft JSON type a J object. So I wonder if that would bind to it. I don't know. Again, a little, a little bit, uh, a little too much into it there. But what this also means is if it doesn't pass the validation, I will then just take the JSON, valid or not, and throw it back into the view model and show it to the dashboard. So nothing gets wiped out either in the process. Okay. So the dashboard controller post test. This is what I was working on Tuesday. You can see I removed. One of the tests, the, the is null or empty test, I just combined it into this one sanity check test. You can see the null or empty is part of it here, these four test cases. And then I've got up here, this is, this is kind of like cowboy JSON, right? I don't want this to actually work, even though it's valid JSON. And I've got like the minimum valid JSON for the different, the two different documents I'm working on there. And then some assertions here to, to test that the errors were handled correctly by the controller action. So I want to find out actually what happens if I put an invalid JSON. We're going to find out. So invalid JSON would remove that, for instance. Yeah, there's a different error for sure. That makes sense it would be in here. I'm guessing it's a JSON serialization error is saying JSON for type. Yeah, it's trying to ser it's trying to deserialize a string. It's not valid, so it's bombing. So probably I'm gonna put some uh, some tests. Whoa, where are we? Here we go. To make sure it handles the case of invalid JSON, I'll put a to do in here. If either string uh, validate if either string is uh, actually valid JSON, because it could just be a you know a cat hit, was walking over the keyboard. Okay, so that's that's it. That's all I've done, and that gives me the ability to dynamically add other static commands. So I want to go back and look at my backlog here. So the raid, so this is done. 
the raid, we just added the raid, done, and the defend, done. Were there any other commands down here that were suggested that could maybe be used uh, to uh, show some static uh, content? So bookmark, no. Info about, those kind of seem like they'd be synonyms of help maybe? Or there'd just be little messages about you know, what this, what this stream is. Well, one other thing I should mention, those commands that I add dynamically, they will dynamically show up in the help command there. So you can see that defend and raid are both there in the messages as well. So those are all just added uh, at the end. So just by adding that to the document, it'll show up in that list. So info and about, we could add info and about here to, uh, where, did I, where did I close it? I must have closed it. Board. There it is. So command info is going to say something. Another thing I want to do is add a real JSON editor to this and make it a little more pleasant to work with. Zoom in a little bit. But I hope I'm also demonstrating kind of one of the benefits of having a, a document database is that, you know, normally this kind of stuff, well, not necessarily, but this would be a lot, you, you couldn't pull off this level of uh, dynamism with a relational database. You could probably jump through some hoops and put it in like fifth normal form or some craziness like that. Um, but I'm just, this is all just a single document I'm editing. You think of this as like a row in a, in a, a database table, right? I guess this could be a, a separate table with commands and uh, columns, things like that. But basically, if I want to change this, this what, what's in the static commands document, all I have to do is change my C-sharp class. And then since I'm editing raw JSON and somewhat validating it, I don't have to make any schema changes or anything like that uh, as I go forward. So hopefully I'm demonstrating that at least in a small way. All right, so what do I want the info and about to be? So I think I have like a little, a little blurb somewhere on my um, Twitch page that might be good to show there. I'm gonna show myself streaming myself. And I've got this about me, it's a bit long. Maybe a short version of that. Short version of my bio. Uh, something like, um, where was I? I'm a guy who loves to code. Uh, this is a question friendly channel. Uh, I was a guy to code and talk about it, I guess. What happened there? Talk about it. This is a question friendly channel. Ask away. And I'll be the same content for about. So I have to start. So just save those. If I hit bang help again, you'll notice that info and about now show up as commands. And the info will show up, uh, there we go. So maybe we could put in a little, uh, little emote in here. So I just info on us to about. Uh, there we go. Now I show up there like a sir. Smoking my pipe. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so anything else? I've got the info and about. Those are done. Done. Uptime, that's really dynamic. Uh, stream info. Oh, that's probably the same thing, right? As info and about. I don't know why I put these on the list, but I may as well knock them out. info here we go I'm a guy who loves to code and talk about it this is a question friendly channel ask away easy as that okay knock that out follow age how long the following channel for so I really can't do that and then static content ASCII art this is something I, I thought of 
just for fun, because I, I started putting ASCII art in my little countdown at the beginning of the stream. But uh, there's this like ASCII art archive out there. All this nifty ASCII art. I, I used to be way into ASCII art way back in the day, way back in the BBS days. And so I thought it might be fun to maybe make this like a little Buckazoids thing, like you redeem your Buckazoids and show some random ASCII art somewhere on the screen. I don't know. Maybe over, maybe over my face or, I don't know, bounces around the screen or something. But lots of different uh, options here for ASCII art. It'd be really fun to maybe just even pull them from this site directly. I don't think there's an API or anything. Um, but scrape them from the site and just throw them up on the screen. It'd be fun. I don't know. Something to think about. But that I can't, really can't do that with... Um, with the static content thing. So, so there we go. So I, after I got that feature done, I knocked out six items here from the list pretty quickly. So that's good. Um, all right. So what else we got? We've got a uh, ticker message, maybe at the top, or maybe, maybe at the bottom where that, where that purple is right down here. I don't know. Show a little ticker message every once in a while. Uh, rotating pictures. This is something that Streamlabs has a plugin for, so I may use that, but... I'm not quite sure what what's the benefit of this. It just it can show an image on the screen every you know change it every five minutes or so. But what I would prefer to have is a link. So if people are interested in learning more about the thing I was showing, you click on it. So see a Couchbase logo. What's that? Click. See a Plural Site logo. Okay. Click. Uh, live Coders team it goes to the Live Coder site, etc. I, I I could show a link in the image. But I don't really see much, uh, you know, other than just sort of showing a nifty logo. Maybe people ask about it. Um, I don't see much benefit to having that on the screen. It just takes up a lot of screen space. Uh, and then sort of the alternative to that is a message that goes out into the chat every n minutes. So again, I could define this dynamically uh, in the dashboard. Just having, instead of commands, I'd have a second one called like, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, Regular chat messages, I don't know, scheduled, scheduled chat messages, I don't know. Scheduled chat messages. And that could be an array. And then inside that array would be an object of like, oh, here's the message. Hi, everyone. And then uh, interval would be like every you know, 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, but then, I, but I have to. Oh, it has to be a comma there. This isn't going to work. But uh, then I have to figure out a way to show that every 15 minutes. And it's 15 minutes starting when, and um, just in perpetuity. And got to make sure I'm not doubling it up, things like that. So that's something I'm thinking about as well. Pre-show trivia. This is an idea I got my my uh, since the stay-at-home order. My uh, my church here has gone completely virtual. And one thing they're, they're doing, what I really, really like, I wish they would do when we go back um, to in-person services again, is they show like uh, before the virtual, before the internet, uh, the, oh gosh, the video stream, the live stream, they show like a little 10 question trivia, like at the uh, movie theaters. When you go to the movie theaters and you see movie trivia on the screen before the, sh before, uh, the service starts. I thought it'd be fun for, for the stream here. Like, uh, instead of just a, a boring countdown with a clock, actually show some trivia. And you, you could play along as you're, as you're waiting for the stream to, to kick off. I could build it, certainly. Uh, I, I was kind of hoping to find some sort of software that did that already. Um, I don't want to have to build you know, PowerShell presentations every... PowerShell? PowerPoint presentations every, you know, uh, twice a week, right? So I'd like to make, like, a... Uh, just a, a database of trivia questions that would pick randomly or, or I could just go in and add the questions and answers and then it would do the rest of the display stuff for me. So I don't know. Uh, if you have any suggestions for that other than just a, a new PowerPoint uh, deck every, every, every day, uh, I'd like to hear about that. A bookmark. I'm not really sure what I'd do with this. I, th I think some other channels have something similar where they make show notes kind of, and it, it tracks like what time it was made so you could combine that all together later. I'm still not really sure what I'd do with that. So that's that's my backlog right now, chatbot stuff. 
And uh, just as I said in the stream earlier, you can go check out the full source code for this. It's all here on on uh, Git. It's even got an Apache 2.0 license, so you can use it for whatever you want to. What, what are those? Uh, oh, that's just how the license works. Yeah, so everything's there. Some instructions for how to set it up. You know, it's not super smooth, and you, and you have to do some manual stuff. I need to update this. Ooh, that's a that's a mistake there. I don't know what that's about. I need to update this with some information about the uh, dashboard. But for the most part, it's it's all there. Um, so you can check it out and get it uh, starting yourself. It looks like it got two forks. Oh, Surly and TBD both forked it. That's cool. TBD stands for Terry Burns Dyson. I thought it was to be determined. All this time, I thought it was a play on uh, to be determined. But it's his actual name, Terry Burns Dyson. That's cool. And Surly Dev, of course, have, uh, have done their own forks. And some people have started as well. Oh, look at that. Oh, starting to pick up some steam. But anyway, if you have some suggestions, ideas, bugs, open up an issue here. I would love, I would love to see your suggestions uh, or your complaints or anything. And if you want to fix anything or you want to improve anything, send a pull request. Totally welcome. Um, again, very, very friendly here. So uh, if you submit a pull request and maybe it's not ideal, totally cool. I'll, I'll still work with you. We can, we can actually make a stream out of it. It'll be, it'll be great. So don't be afraid. If you want to practice your open source, uh, you know, before you submit to like a real project, you can try out submitting something to, to Matt Switchbot, submit a pull request, submit an issue, and, and we'll go through it, see how that works. It'll be great. Some of this Docker stuff can go. I'm not really using that anymore. That can, well, yeah, that can go probably. But anyway, some cleanup needs to be done there, but we're all set to go with that, uh, with that repo. So knock yourself out. All right. What else are we doing today? Unit tests, we covered those. Plural sites, we're going to hold off on that. So let's start working on a presentation. Is this the right outline right here? Okay. All right, so. Um, oh, gosh. I just got a picture. Oh, wow. That is terrific stuff. My wife just sent me a picture. I'm going to show this to you. This is something. Uh, so, in our backyard, this is, that plastic box is where the cable comes into the house. And uh, it looks like it wasn't closed properly or it broke at some point. And now, let me just crop out that gas meter. I don't know if that's anything important or not. But now, there's a bird's nest in it. This is at least the third bird's nest in our backyard. There's another one on our sunroom, like where the downspouts are. So it's just like a whole bird sanctuary in our backyard right now. I hope that it hasn't done any damage to the actual cable. Because uh, <laughs> uh, that's kind of a lifeline uh, for my job and uh, our entertainment around here. It all comes through this little wire. So I might have to do something about that. Unfortunately, hey, Ver Veranchi12. Hi, I'm new. What are you developing for? I see Windows and C Sharp. Correct. I do a lot of C Sharp and .NET. It doesn't necessarily have to be Windows. I, I do a lot of web development, so ASP.NET in here, which can run these days on anywhere, Linux and Mac or anything else. Well, I don't know about anything else, but um, so mostly I'm doing web development, ASP.NET. But welcome. Thanks for hanging out. What are you? Uh, what are you working on? What are you interested in, in learning more about there, Veranchi Twelve? Oh, you're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. I was just about to switch over. I, I started stop coding today. I may do some more coding. Oh, Vue JS and Swift. Interesting. So Swift, to me, it's still like uh, iOS coding. But I think you can do other stuff with Swift these days, right? And Vue.js, of course, is a front-end JavaScript framework. So uh, you're experienced and well with Swift. Uh, so that means you're, you, by well, you mean you're good with Swift. You know how to 
coding. Oh, so sw like like a Swift backend. Can you do a Swift backend? I don't know. I I have never touched Swift. The only thing I know about Swift is that it looks nicer than Objective C. <laughs> That's that's about it. I don't know much about Objective C either, other than it looks horrible. <laughs> Not much, but it's similar. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I've never done. Uh, I think I did a Vue.js like Hello World project back in the day, but that's been a while. And I know Vue has gained a lot of popularity recently. Uh, I've not done much with it. I don't do much with front end, honestly. I mostly it's back end stuff, C sharp, .NET, and um, you know, databases. You know, No SQL, SQL things like that. Calvin Allen loves Vue, hearts Vue. There's a little heart flying across the screen. He loves some Vue. As in now, I feel all programming languages are similar. I understood the coding concepts. I think uh, if you think all programming languages are similar, I kind of understand what you mean. All procedural programming languages are, are similar in a sense. Uh, functional languages will be very different uh, uh, for you, different approach. You feel pretty comfortable with all of them. Kevin Griffin also loves you with the C-sharp heart. <laughs> ah, yeah. Similar procedural, functional, object-oriented. Well, okay, I'm sort of lumping in procedural and object-oriented together. That's not uh, that's not fair. But functional, very different. Prologue. Oh yeah, try some prologue. I I took uh, two college courses. Uh, they were called, I think they're called Intro to Artificial Intelligence. Uh, and they they use we use prologue in that course. And uh, it was it was pretty cool. Um, this is like pre, you know the machine learning AI craze, right? This was back in the early 2000s. But we basically wrote a program that would look at stock market information and make predictions about which stocks were going to do well. <laughs> so very similar to the kind of thing you do now with, um, you know, ML.net or, uh, you know, uh, whatever other machine learning framework you're using. You had to do some MATLAB coding for my girlfriend, one, MATLAB is horrible, lol. I, uh, I did not, I don't think I used MATLAB in college. I used something else though, a different math package I used for a differential equations course. It was similar to MATLAB, but it was not MATLAB. Scilab, I don't think it was Scilab either. No, I don't remember what it was. But I, all I remember was, <laughs> well, See, back when I went to college, not every classroom had computers in it. Even even the computer college. <laughs> uh, it was still a lot of chalkboards and overheads and things. Um, and, and very, very few laptops. I don't remember any laptops, in fact, uh, in my school. Um, but I, I remember one course I took, it was differential equations, and I was terrified of differential equations because they just seemed so difficult. But the course I was working on was all... We, had, we, were in a, we were in a lab, and we all had the same software, and we all had computers in front of us, so differential equations were very, very easy. If we could just t put them into the computer, it would solve them for us. And so, basically, I walked away from that class. I don't remember anything about differential equations, <laughs> because I don't feel like I learned anything. What am I developing currently? Well, this right here on the screen, this is uh, the chatbot. I'm, I'm about to switch to something else, but this is the, the chatbot that's running in the channel right now. So if you type bang help, for instance, you can start interacting with the chatbot. And it's using a Couchbase backend, NoSQL database, as a backend, using the Twitch Live API to communicate with Twitch. And I've got it deployed to Azure by using GitHub Actions. So if you type bang current project, you'll get uh, a, a GitHub link. You can see the actions and uh, how they how that gets deployed to Azure. But it's an ASP.NET application with uh, with um, sort of a, a job running in the background, like a background task, background job. Help, Matthew's cool. <laughs> you don't actually have to type anything after the help. <laughs> you can just type bang help. But I appreciate you saying that I'm cool, and I appreciate you spelling my name with two Ts. Very much appreciate that. Okay. All right, so. This is the abstract that I submitted to CouchCon. Is it not math you, math you? Uh, you know, that's, 
I would be, uh, that's a typo I'm okay with. I'm not okay with 1T, and I'm not okay with Matty, with a Y. Uh, so, math you, match you, you know, that's fine too. Those all, those all work. <laughs> Uh, so this is the conference I submitted to CouchCon, couchconlive.org. And so I submitted an abstract to this conference, and this is the abstract right here. The Couchbase server is a powerful, distributed, quote, NoSQL document database. Did you know that they're a free version of it? Oh, my gosh. Oh, so embarrassing. There is a free version of it <sighs> called Couchbase Server Community Edition. This session will showcase the amazing features that you can use without buying a license. After this session, you can store JSON, cache it, query it with SQL, scale it, text search it, replicate it, and sync it to mobile devices, all with a single platform. So I, the title of the session is, let me find it somewhere. Title is, Nine things you can do for free with Couchbase Server. Now, th that's the type of session I normally wouldn't submit to a conference uh, because it's it's very... Uh, I don't really see what's funny about that. Uh, but I, I wouldn't normally submit this title to a conference because it's very much focused on a, a single like uh, vendor there, Couchbase Incorporated Couchbase Server. So normally I would say, well, let's do an intro to NoSQL or let's talk about... Uh, microservices with NoSQL and Kubernetes, uh, you know, something like that, right? Something where it's not it's not going to be seen as a sales pitch. That's the last thing I want is for people to think I'm in sales and trying to sell them licenses and things like that. <laughs> Verachi is really having a lot of fun with the uh, with the bot commands. I love it. Thanks for all the testing there, Verachi. Appreciate it. Go to town. Stream info and about pretty much do the same thing though. Anything's, anything's funny with the rim shot. <laughs> yeah, if you want to use the trout, you got to specify a, a person. So I can say trout Calvin A. Allen, for instance, and slap him around with large trout. <laughs> yes, now that's funny. The old trout slap. Uh, did it play the sound? It should have played it, right? You all did hear that, correct? Make sure my audio settings are correct in the Streamlabs. You did not hear it. Ooh. Okay, I have desktop audio off. That may be the reason why I had it muted. But I, I think it would come from the chatbot itself. So it should have come through. Well, now I'm worried because I heard it for sure. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, let's go figure this out. Take a little detour. Nothing more important than sound effects. All right, so this is something I may want to add to uh, my dashboard as well. But uh, let's go to Twitch chat here. And... Uh, Oh, what? Let's see. Shoot. How does it? Uh, let's see. Sound effect handler. Receive sound effect. No, 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 nope. It's um, sound effect lookup. Sound effect lookup handler. Valid sound effects. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, it's it goes from. Okay, I know. It goes from the cookies. That's right. Okay. Um, so I, hmm, I don't know how to manage cookies in my uh, Streamlabs thing. That's going to be tricky. Yeah, because see, what I've got is it only let you do the sound effect every, I don't know, five, ten minutes or something. Oh, so remind me in, in five ten minutes to to do a to do a rim shot. I wanna I wanna see is it should show up on 
because I've got in Streamlabs, I've got the chatbot is just a web page that I show on the screen here. So that's where the sound should be coming from. It should not be coming from my desktop. Uh, so I heard it for sure. But if you all didn't hear it out there, then I may have something wrong with the audio settings in Streamlabs. Okay. Anywho. Okay, well, we'll come back to that later. All right. Uh, all right, so this is the... Uh, This is the outline I'm working on right here. Uh, and I also want to show some, okay, but anyway, the reason I, 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 would, I would submit this with Couchbase in the title like this, well, is for one, I like Couchbase, all right? So I always want to submit sessions like this, but uh, something that's vendor specific, many conferences, many organizers are hesitant to pick those because they've been burnt in the past by people who show up and basically just deliver a commercial. I don't, I don't do that. I want to deliver some useful technical information with my session, but that's one of the reasons why people shy away from that. So it's not just couch-based. It's just like, oh, five things you can do with the latest version of Oracle, right? That's obviously going to be a very Oracle-specific session. Um, so you want to say, oh, here's 10 things. Ten, you, know, you may want to do a comparison between Oracle and SQL Server. So something is going to be valuable to people beyond just... Um, you know, a, a commercial. Are you a teacher on Pluralsight? So they call them authors on Pluralsight. I am a Pluralsight author. Uh, my session has not been published yet, but I am working on it. Coming up very soon, hopefully. Uh, so anyway, uh, I submit, what I'm getting at is I submitted this one to CouchCon because it's CouchCon. It's got Couch in the name. So I felt like I had to submit something that was Couchbase specific just because of the name Couchbase. And so lucky for me, it was accepted. So I, I, feel, very, uh, I feel very honored to be accepted at CouchCon, even though it's not affiliated with Couchbase. Uh, it just happens to have Couch in the name. So I also put a little extra in here. It said, I'm also going to talk about some trivia about uh, the name of Couchbase. Why is it called Couchbase? And why... It's not the same thing as CouchDB, which is a very common misconception or assumption that people make that CouchBase and CouchDB are the same thing. They are slightly related, uh, but they are not the same piece of software. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit of trivia, and, and that's going to be part of the session. And uh, It's something I've been answering that question for four years now, CouchBase versus CouchDB. So this is the outline that I had put together of the nine things. So the way I usually start my presentations is a title slide, uh, just to kind of you know throw up on the screen while people are, are, are walking in. Uh, a little preview slide, a little preview, a little hook of why this session's interesting to you, why you should stick around, uh, and what you might see in the session. Then I'll show my info, like who I am, and uh, you know, how you can contact me, and blah, blah, blah. And then title slide again. And then I launch into the presentation. That's just my usual formula at the beginning of a, a slide deck. And so I've actually done the math here. I've got the nine things. And this is something I added later. But if I've got 35 to 45 minutes, I've got about four minutes for each one of these nine things. And actually a little less because I have the trivia and some enterprise and some next step slides at the end that I want to throw up there as well. So I've got just about three and a half, well, I think just about four minutes, a four and a half minutes, maybe I'm going to round down to four for each one of these things. So I want to cover each of these nine things in about four minutes each. So I can't dive deep on any one of these. Um, but I guess um, I wanted to, you know, sort of go over the feature set uh, of Couchbase uh, community and all the, the, the major things you can do with Couchbase community that are included in a free version, the free community version. And just to show that, hey, this is, a, this is a pretty powerful database as it is. The free version is, and of course the enterprise version is even more powerful, uh, but, the, but the community version has a lot of cool stuff in it that you can start playing with for free. And this will become even more compelling, I think, later this year when, we, uh, when Couchbase officially launches uh, the Couchbase Cloud offering, which will hopefully, fingers crossed, have a good free tier in it 
uh, so developers can sign up for a free tier and do uh, stuff with Couchbase without having to install it themselves or having to run it in Docker or Kubernetes or, or something like that. I don't know. I am not. I am not in charge of the dates or what's in the product or anything like that. So I don't know if all these things will be in that free edition. I'm hoping they will be, but I don't know for sure. Um, probably not mobile stuff right away, I would imagine. But maybe I don't know. I can't. I'm, I can't predict. Uh, all I'm. All I'm doing is just speculating here. Uh, and so anyway, I know you, you'll be able to store JSON into it. I know that for one. So uh, what I want to talk about, before I even get into making slides, like what do I want to show? Why does it keep doing this? This is a file on Google Drive, but every time I save, it's like it prompts me, like are you sure you want to override it? Is everything okay, Google Drive? Oh, all right, I don't know. So storing JSON. I think most of the stuff I can do from the Couchbase UI with the exception of the scaling, that might be, maybe I want to save the scaling for last. So that's something I can do with Docker. Well, no, I don't, I don't see. And th by the way, this, some of this stuff, it lines up with what I'm doing in my Pluralsight course that I'm working on, which is going to be basically well, I don't, I'm not supposed to get into specifics, but it's going to be Couchbase related. How's that? <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, I can, I can do all this stuff. I think it makes sense to put in this order. So, store JSON is the most basic thing. It's a JSON document database. Import from CSV. This is something that people might want to do, uh, well, or, or JSON files. Might want to do when they first start out is they have a data set, they want to import it. That's going to be annoying. Import it into Couchbase. Real easy. Jared Lawthorne, his the question for the chatbot. Are you running three Couchbase servers on Azure? What's the cost of that? I am not running three Couchbase servers on Azure. I am just running the one. Um, you, you, I mean, in production, you're supposed to run three because you're only when you get three are you going to get the true benefits of a distributed database, right? That's the minimum recommendation that, uh, uh, you know, Couchbase engineers and... Uh, um, you know, product managers and whatnot, they recommend three. I am not. I'm running just the one. So basically, it's not distributed, right? <laughs> I'm not getting those benefits. It's just a, a single database. If it goes down, I'm, I'm done. It's right. It's it, the, whole, the whole thing goes down. So not recommended for production uh, because Couchbase provides replication. Couchbase provides distributed data. And, and the ben you're only going to get the benefits of that as you add, uh, you know, at least a total of three servers. Do I have backups? I don't. <laughs> I don't have backups. That's something I've commented on uh, before in the past, is that I need to implement some sort of automated backup um, of my couch-based data. Now, fortunately, all I'm really storing right now is Twitch chat data. It's not super critical. And I also have some of my digital challenge data on there, which that's, that's something that I probably would care more about backing up. But I do need to into some sort of regular backup. I can make backups of it manually at will, but that's kind of annoying. I want to, uh, and actually, I'd also think, I also think Azure provides some sort of backup as well. Um, I think, I'm not sure. I'm using a VM. Uh, I think they provide some sort of backups. Maybe not. Uh, what's the cost of that? So the cost of that, I, um, I could bring up, I don't know, should I bring up my, my Azure billing portal? Would that be, is that gauche to do that? I don't know. Hey, AJ2017, hello. How are you? I might have to give uh, both of you your little uh, little intro videos since you're both becoming quite regulars. Um, the thing with the Azure Billing Portal is that it's such a slow website. Oh my gosh, it's so slow. It just takes forever to load. Uh, go to the portal. No. Where is it? Um, okay. Yeah, job transfer billing ownership. No. Oh, there's a, there's a little screen. Okay. Um, but what is this period on here? Let me see. I'm not showing anything yet. Just hang on. Let me make sure I don't show anything sensitive on here. 
Uh, okay. So this billing period is, here we go. I think this is fine. You can kind of see what's going on here. All right. So we're, we're just over halfway through my current billing period, which is April 12th to May 11th. And you can see right here, I've got this one VM of Couchbase. And so far it's cost me 47 bucks. Now that cost is strictly the Azure cost of hosting on the VM. Uh, Couchbase isn't charging me anything. Although technically I'm using the enterprise version. Um, I don't think they're going to uh, come after me because I'm an employee. But uh, I'm just saying if you're using the community version uh, and you're running on the, the same VM that I am, which is a lower end VM by the way, um, it's costing me 47 bucks a month, right? Obviously, if you want higher performance, uh, you know, uh, more RAM, things like that, you're going to need a, a bigger, a bit, a more cores, you're going to need a bigger machine. I'm actually, I think I'm running it on a VM that's below, slightly below the minimum recommendations of Couchbase because I'm a cheapskate and because I don't have a huge, um, I, I don't have a huge, um, what do you call it, a lot of operations happening, right? It's basically you all on Twitch, every time you chat, that's an, that's an operation. That's about as as uh, as uh, taxed as this, as this database gets. Um, so we're we're, only, we're not talking the fifteen thousand ops per second, <laughs> right? Or or like the seven million ops per second that uh, Couchbase customer Amadeus actually wants. They have a much bigger cluster. So the monthly forecast one hundred and ten. Yes. Now uh, keep in mind this is including all my other services. So I have my website. I have a disk, so that disk, that's probably the part that gets, gets backed up there, the VM disk, and I have other stuff running on, on uh, Azure. Um, but yeah, so it looks like a total of, of 110 is the forecast. Can I get to forecast for just this one? Looks like no. Yeah, so 110 bucks is my total there. Um, Cross-cutting concerns, this is my .com website. It's, it's the full version of a website, right, because I... I have, a, I have a domain name that I need on there, and I have uh, uh, HTTP, like SSL, things like that, so I need to pay the, the full price for website, but I have a lot of free services on there as well. Others, I think uh, I still host a lot of podcast files on here, so that is some blob storage. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's some of that cost there. But you can see, yeah, my, my biggest expense probably is that, is that node of, of Couchbase. Single single machine of Couchbase there. Um, so that's that's it. Now, uh, fortunately, I am a Microsoft MVP, so I get some free Azure credit every month, which is very nice. That seems a bit high compared to a Linux VPS. Really? Are you saying I could save some money? I don't. I, I think I am. I think it is running Linux. Or, or are you just saying Azure in general seems seems more expensive compared to other providers that give you Linux VPS? That may be true. I don't know. But uh, again, I want to. I want to. One of the reasons I use Azure on a regular basis is because Microsoft is kind enough to provide me with some free Azure credit every month because I'm a Microsoft MVP. There was another provider I used compared to Vulture, for example. Let's have a look. Because actually, J.R. Lawthorn, um, there was another cloud provider I was trying out. They were, compared to Azure, very, very bare bones, very basic, but it was a really good interface and a really uh, just simple website and really low cost provider. They were called SpinUp. And unfortunately, they just announced they had to go out of business um, because of the impact of uh, of the whole pandemic thing, which is just lousy. Because they were, it was so cool, so promising, what they were doing there with uh, with um, with spin up. And I had done a few streams about it. Yeah, the, yeah. So this is very. This looks like very similar, right? It's sort of a bare bones, stripped down. Here, we'll just give you the we'll give you a machine, and you can manage it however you want to. Um, so let's have a look at here. What, 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 kind of, what kind of we got? So I, I think my, my Azure machine is like three and a half gig of RAM, something like that. So somewhere around here. And that's actually, yeah, 
20 bucks a month. That's about what uh, SpinUp was charging for a similar machine, I think. So, yeah, very cool. This is Vulture, V-U-L-T-R dot com. But, you know, I, I get some free credit from Azure. I, I you know, Azure is uh, lots of great features and, and stuff out there. But, yeah, I, I, I probably could save a few bucks if I went to a different provider. Um, but then I got I to gotta do some more management stuff. You know, do they have Kubernetes uh, capabilities? Can I deploy Docker for them, things like that, right? So, um, yeah, seems like a reasonable price. Is it single core? 50% faster than what? I don't know. But yeah, so yeah, there's lots of other providers out there. Um, but I, I just, you know, Azure is kind of what I've been used to for a while. And I, I experimented with SpinUp. Uh, and then they went out of business, which was lousy. Sorry, SpinUp. Uh, I feel for you. I really think you had something cool going. Maybe you can regroup afterwards. But yeah, I, so this is all just kind of buckazoids to me. It's just space bucks, right? Because it's all, it's all being covered by Microsoft. And in the, and if I ever do go over the amount, which I have before when I'm doing like heavy demoing of Kubernetes, for instance, then I can just expense it <laughs> because I'm demonstrating something at the Couchbase booth or at a Couchbase event or something that I can expense it. But uh, yeah, so I try to keep this under my my uh, my free credit from Azure cap, and so far I have no problem doing that. Okay, how do we get on that tangent? Uh, chat. This is a chatbot question. Yep. So backups. The answer is maybe I have backups, but uh, <laughs> you know what the old saying is: if you if you don't test them, then you don't have them, right? So I never actually tested a backup. It's never been super high priority for me because the kind of data stored on there is is really not super important. All right. So storing JSON. Um. I kind of just maybe want to. I don't know. We could just do a whole. I could just do the whole thing like, okay, we're going to do a, a Docker new new cluster and then uh, add a bucket and then add a document. Simple as that. That can be done under four minutes easily. Um, uh, maybe we want to talk about, maybe it's just some some really short um, tidbits of data modeling. Okay, I, I have four minutes here. And I have a full session about data modeling, but some short tidbits of data modeling there. Um, maybe, maybe talk about how keys work. Uh, yeah, that's probably good enough. So set up a new cluster with Docker. Uh, config, you know, We'll do some, you know, configuration setup, setup cluster. We'll do Docker new, Docker start, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Set up cluster, go through the wizard, add a bucket, add a JSON document, talk about how keys work, and then some short tidbits of data modeling if I have time. So I think that's pretty good to talk about that. We're getting, our, we're getting Couchbase running. We're getting a, a document installed in it. No big deal. Import from CSV. This is a little trickier because... Uh, this is something that's hopefully changing soon, but uh, there's a CB import command line tool. Um, but it, you won't have it unless you actually install Couchbase um, on your machine. Not in you could you could technically use it in Docker too. You'd have to go you have to like uh, run Bash inside Docker, and then you could do CB import there. But just you don't have CB import as a standalone utility right now. I don't think. So, hmm, CB import, I could just make like a CS. So what, what kind of CSV file do I want to import? I think like the Stack Overflow data, as an example. I think that would be good. Uh, yeah, and then Uh, that's, that's a CSV example, as a CSV example. Do I have a JSON example? Does it really matter? Do I need to show both? I can get the idea, right, if I import. Let me ask you, uh, everyone's hanging on the channel. Uh, if I was going through a, a database demo and I, I showed you how to import a CSV and 
importing a JSON is basically the exact same process except with JSON. Would you find that to be necessary or could I skip that? Could I leave out the JSON part and just assume that, oh, you can do the same thing but with, with JSON files too? Just mention it and move on or do I need to show it? Skip, okay. I'll just, I'll just mention, you can do the same thing with JSON and move on. Or just use JSON. Well, my, my expectation is that um, if you're coming from a relational background, and most people are, that you probably would uh, probably be easier to get CSV files from your database than typically JSON, right? So I figured I'd start with CSV. Seems to be a more common use case. If you already have your data in JSON, well, that's super good. Um, but that seems less common. I think people will be more interested in CSV. Okay, cache, automatically. The thing with Couchbase is it does this. So what, what can I actually show with this? I mean, I guess I could uh, uh, talk about, um, this, might be, this might be some good slides, I think. So maybe just like uh, how, yeah, hits and misses, yeah. Um, sort of DCP and, and how Couchbase works, basically, kind of a high level. Uh, and then maybe like just talk about the RAM quota of a bucket, something like that. Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. By the way, I'm going to install the uh, CE version. Sometimes I get in the habit of just using the uh, enterprise version, so I got to make sure to, to the CE version here. It's a habit I got to break, by the way. Query with SQL, okay. So this will just be a uh, query workbench. And then uh, uh, what I usually do is, uh, let me, and again, let me ask you for opinions here, but I'll execute, I'll write and execute a simple select query. Uh, there'll be an error message because there's no index. And then so I create an index and I will create a, um, I'll create a primary index and, and uh, then execute the query again. So the question I have for you, if you're watching this, is this a worthwhile exercise to write the query first, to show the error message, to explain why the error message is there, and that you have to then create an index? Or would it be better to just create the index first, get it out of the way, and then write the select? Because I, I think the only point I want to drive home is that you, you, can't, you can't just run any query on it right out of the box without an index. Because that could be really bad. <laughs> if you have a huge hunk of data, you don't want a select query to scan every single document in your database. It's going to take forever. It's going to be a timeout, probably. It's going to be very frustrating. Um, that's why it's not uh, enabled by default. I'm going to go with that. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is, and this is still kind of part of number four, but I want to show that this is not just a really simple SQL-like query language, that it's a full SQL. Uh, so I want to... Uh, going to write a join. So um, maybe I'll just install the travel sample bucket, then write a select with a join. I add the primary index to my CB startup script, just for local development, I assume. Yeah, and I, I'm not gonna be writing, I'm not gonna be working through a startup, excuse me, a startup script. And by startup script, you mean like, um, like a Docker file script? that runs a startup, or do you mean like in your actual program? Because you could do you could do either one. You can create indexes via REST API or a command line. A shell script that runs from Docker. Okay, yeah. Not uncommon, but I don't know if I want to necessarily get into, I don't want to get into Docker too much, right? This isn't a Docker session. I, th I feel like I'd spend a lot of time covering, oh, well, this is how you create a Docker file, and this is how you do a Docker build, and... This is how you add a shell script to it, things like that. And I, I don't, I think a lot of people are comfortable with Docker, then you know, it keeps growing every day, but not everyone is yet. 
So I want to keep the Docker stuff light. All right, so like with the join, uh, I may need an index for this. Uh, and then I think I may also want to show off the um, index, what is it called, index optimizer. This may be a good time for that, I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I definitely probably show off the, the, the plan visualizer. That's a pretty cool feature. Okay, scale. So docker start a second node. Add the node via the Couchbase UI. This is just called add server. And then uh, uh, just show the list of servers. And, and talk about, I don't know, talk about horizontal scaling a bit. Distribution, maybe even, oh no, I won't get the replicas yet. That's, that's, that's later. Text search. So I will have to create a FTS index. Probably just go with a real simple one. Can you demo a performance diff of single versus multiple servers? Um, probably not. <laughs> because it's all going to be running on Docker on a single machine. So I could certainly try. I just don't know if it would be any better or it'd be really worth it to show that off. Um, certainly I could, I could run a, a program called um, Pillow Fight, but you know, I'm running two nodes on the same machine. So I don't, even if it was faster, I don't know if that's particularly valid uh, of, a, of, a, uh, of a demo there. But I'll, let me think about that. Um, show off performance difference. Maybe pillow fight. It's worth a shot. I'll try it and see what happens. All right, create an FTS index. And then, see, here's where having some code would actually be a little more interesting because I could just demonstrate a text search, but it's not going to be super exciting. Uh, I, mean, I could add fuzziness, factor, um, show off stemming maybe. That's kind of the same thing. Is it? I don't know. Something like that. Duct tape a few desktops together to take with you. J.R. Lawthorne. It's so funny you bring that up. <laughs> this was actually one of my ideas when I first came to Couchbase. Well, not desktops, um, but uh, let's see if I can find it here. Summer, the couch case. Here it is. 2016. Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. Couch case, couch case. I want to see if there's a picture of it somewhere. So couch base, couch case rises. Here it is. Yep, here it is. <laughs> so I had purchased these Intel compute sticks. And they're like four core, four gig of RAM. Should have been the, I mean, the bare minimum to run a, a, a couch-based server on them. It turns out they were, they were not good enough. Uh, they, fail, they fail all the time. Because they're really just meant for streaming Netflix, right? That's really all they're meant for. Not meant to run a database <laughs> on them. And actually, these were Windows compute sticks which I then stripped Windows off and installed Ubuntu on because the, the Linux compute sticks came with less memory. <laughs> so I had to buy the Windows ones and then strip the Windows off and put Ubuntu on them. It was a whole thing. I don't remember why I put Ubuntu on in the first place. Why can't I just run it on Windows? I don't remember. There was something. Oh, I think it was permissions issue or something. I don't know. Newer Raspberry Pi would work. Well, if it's still an ARM then it's not going to be super easy um, because I'd have to recompile Couchbase to run on an ARM, which is, is not supported as far as I know. So if there's a new Raspberry Pi that has like an x86 or x64, heck yeah, give that a try. But then you can see I've also got a router in here. 
to network them together. And I've got these adapters because they didn't have network adapters on them. So I had to plug in USB adapters to get network adapters. And then a, a, a little, uh, you can see a power brick here with some USB plugs on it. With light up cables, I thought make it look cooler. So that was my idea. I would just put up in a little suitcase, unpack it, turn it on, and then start demoing it. Because um, it's a wireless router, so I connect to it wirelessly from a laptop. I think it was a really good idea. And, and there's other people at Couchbase who've done something similar. They've used um, to, to demo Couchbase Mobile. They've used Raspberry Pis, I think. No, it wasn't Raspberry Pi. Something like that. But they, they had, it's a lot, a lot, I really couldn't fit in a suitcase, but it's a, a little setup that they used to, to come around and, and demo um, kind of the different capabilities of, of distributed databases. But that was my idea. It worked sometimes. Uh, I presented it at Stir Trek, a big conference in Columbus, and it didn't work on me. It failed. So I had to fall back to Docker. It was my backup plan, unfortunately. Uh, and that Docker, that Stir Trek was, this, this presentation was, problematic for that Star Trek for a couple of reasons, but um, mostly my fault. Anywho, um, yeah, if I could find some sort of um, tiny compute device where I wouldn't have to recompile for ARM and it was powerful enough to run a database server, I might try this again. Uh, but these were pretty expensive, these compute sticks. These were like 50 bucks, something like that. So I, I dropped some money into this thing. And I bought a, a case and all this other stuff. This was actually a, a spare router that I had, but I bought this, bought these fancy cords, these adapters, and uh, um, this this power brick, all this stuff. I still have some of this stuff. <laughs> I never really use these compute sticks for anything, but I still use this power brick for a lot of stuff. Anywho, that was 2016. What is going on? I'm going to turn off Google uh, Drive. It keeps messing with my file. Oh, well, gosh. What's going on now? No! <sighs> Crap. Got a problem. Going to have to go and fix that real quick. Stand by. <laughs> this is the risk of streaming stuff is I would show passwords accidentally on the screen, which I don't want to do. But now, of course, my bot's going to crash <laughs> because I had to change my Couchbase password. So I just showed it on the screen. That's no good. All right, app services. Twitch bot. It might not crash right away because it might still have the connection. I don't know. Mac, if cost wasn't a problem, maybe Mac minis. Well, see, Mac is also tricky because the Mac version of Couchbase server has a reduced number of vBuckets. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't know as anyone, I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure that clusters of Macs are not supported in production. So uh, that might be tricky but I'm pretty sure clusters of compute sticks aren't supported either. So <laughs> it might work, but yeah, they are very expensive. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to go with that. Okay. Got that password saved. Let's just see if this still works. Did it crash my bot. Well, it looks like it's still working. Okay. That's good. I think I may have broken something else too, but that's okay for now. Um, Yeah, I'll come to that, cross that bridge when I come to it. All righty. Great FTS index. I want to do like a, uh... oh, man. Surely you can't be serious. 
I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Hello, Surly Def. How are you? Let me just save some files here. Uh, Couchbase Wizard. I don't know about Wizard. Um, maybe a Apprentice. Couchbase Apprentice. How are you, Surly Dev? Good to see you. Thanks for ha hanging out. Uh, so I want to create a FES index. I want to show off a text search, stemming, and or fuzziness. Couchbase Princess. Oh, gosh. I guess I fell for that. I've walked into that one. Oh, my gosh. Surly Dev. You really know how to get my goat, that's for sure. <laughs> but I will accept Couchbase Princess, not not Couchbase Wizard. I'm doing pretty good, Surly Dev. Doing all right. Okay, uh, create a full text search. Show off a text search to me on indexes. Other other search you practice for years. Uh, getting people's goats. You do have a talent. Other other searches can, that can be performed. From the UI is what I'm interested in. Other interesting searches performed from the UI. I also want to show off uh, scoring, relevance, ordering. Because the thing is, like the FTS API is it's pretty complex, right? You can do lots of interesting stuff. You can do um, uh, different, you know. Uh, we call them conjunctions of different criteria and, and mash them all together. But from the UI, you're kind of limited in the, what you can do, at least I think. I haven't looked into that too much. So I'll spend some time researching that to see what else can I show off from the Couchbase UI in terms of full text search. That would be interesting. I certainly show off the scoring and relevance ordering as well. Um, and I may even want to show off the real time indexing that it's not a separate process. It's not a separate install. I want to emphasize that. As you, as you add data to your bucket, it's going to be automatically indexed. You don't have to set up an ETL, uh, no ETL. For that. Replicate automatically. OK, so I want to talk about replicas inside a cluster. Uh, may want to talk about vBuckets. That may be a bit too much. And I also want to talk about uh, XDCR to replicate between clusters. Two different kinds of replication. And actually, the last kind of replication is this one, which is uh, syncing data to mobile devices, which I can't really show off very easily from a UI. This will take a lot more time to set up. Um, but uh, I'll show some slides, probably. Slides of Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Sync Gateway and uh, uh, what platforms are supported. Okay. And, okay, maybe stop for questions. I don't know if that's how it's going to work for this conference or not. Uh, and then uh, trivia slides. So. Couch TV versus Couch Base, because this is Couch Con. It's going to be Couch, Couch, Couch. I'd say Couch a million times. Um, but I want to talk about why Couch Base is named Couch Base. Can you do FTS with CE? I need to set that up for my app. I'm using like queries with Nickel currently. JR Lawthorne, you absolutely can use FTS with CE. And uh, using like queries, it can get you part of the way there. But, uh, you know, based on personal experience, that, that is going to become very, very tough <laughs> to do to get any sort of meaningful text search out of there, especially if you want relevant scoring and stemming and all that kind of stuff. Um, like can only get you so far. And, but uh, also, you can do these days, I think you can do this with CE. I'm not 100% sure. You can actually combine a nickel query with a full text search query. You can do them both at the same time. So if you want to use... Uh, a nickel query to do your discrete matches and, and the FTS index to do your stemming text-based matches, you can use them together. I think that's in CE. I'm not 100% sure on that. I know it's at least in EE. Of course, everything's in EE, but um, I think it's in CE as well. 
So, so yes, you can use FTS on CE, absolutely. And then I wanna talk about enterprise, gotta have one slide for enterprise to say, oh yeah, so this is a community and uh, it's free and you can get help with forums, but uh, with enterprise, now that you say that, I think that's where I hit a problem. I wanna do FTS with Nickel. Yeah, certainly you can do it. Um, if you can't do it, there are some other ways around it. Like if you're in the SDK, you can kind of do an FTS search to bring back uh, keys, and then you can look up the individual keys. Or you can also you can also do exact matches in FTS as well. It's just a little you know it's a little more API work, right? It's not like writing a SQL query, but you can do both. Uh, let me bring it up here. I think it was announced. I know they've been blogging about it like crazy, like as if this is the best new feature of Nickel ever. It, I think it's one of the top new features of Nickel in this current release. Do, 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 do. Let's see. FTS and Nickel. Uh, how to leverage full text search index in Nickel. April 2019. So this is Couchbase 6.5. Okay, yeah, so I, I think that should work. I don't see anything here specifically about enterprise. I've not tried this myself, honestly. But uh, there you go, I'll put a link there. You can check it out, give it a try in community. Full text search is completely based on open source uh, library called Blevy. So that should be no problem in community edition. Uh, oh, this is using curl. What? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you could you could you could do it in couch in older versions of Couchbase too with curl actually, if you wanted to do that. I don't I don't recommend that anymore. But you can certainly do it now with this search query keyword right there. Uh, yeah. So there's some examples there. I want to check out that blog post that was written by Bin Lee, and that's April last year. So it's been around for about a year. Uh, Ish, but of course, 6.5 just came out recently for community. And that might have been for a beta version of, uh, of 6.5. So yeah, there you go. All right, Enterprise, spend one slide talking about what Enterprise gets you beyond the free version. Like, hey, this is cool. Why would I want to spend money on it? Well, if you need any of these things, that's why you want to spend money on it. Oh, um, maybe multidimensional scaling worth of mention on there as well. And next steps, of course, is, okay, you should go download it. Uh, you should follow me on Twitch. Uh, you can check out courses on Pluralsight about Couchbase. Which, not, mine's not up there yet, but there are several others out there. You can contact me. I'll throw my email address up there. My Twitter. Twitter and email. And then I'll also shout out to the forums for technical questions. Uh, you know, other thing we might I might want to mention is we've got this brand new, kind of brand new, uh, developer.couch, if you go to developer.couchbase.com, it redirects to this page here. It's sort of our, our new landing page for developers. And it, it's kind of, it's it's geared much toward much more towards developers. Like if you go to couchbase.com, it's just like, you know, big stock photos and buzzwords and pictures of people, you know, pictures of models and stuff, right? But over here, it's just like, okay, here's, what you can do, here's some code, here's some people who are using it, here's links to learn more. So it's, it's much more geared towards developers. This is a, a kind of a new thing, so I may wanna plug that as well. Um, developer.couchbase.com. Okay, so I think that's what I wanna do. That's a pretty good outline to start with, I think. So the only things that I need to do for myself make this happen are I need to let's see um, I need to think about think about CB imports because I, I have Couchbase installed on my on Windows here but if people are following along they're not going to necessarily have that so I'll figure out how to do that um, cache uh, yeah, I got some of that stuff already. Query with SQL. Yeah, index optimizer. So think through, through join queries. 
show index optimizer. Optimizer. I think the, the, the join query I want to demo, show the index optimizer there. What else? Um, Docker starts in. Okay, yeah, don't want to. Uh, will pillow fight with two nodes actually show a performance improvement? Despite it being in Docker. The thing is, since I'm using this machine, this desktop here, it's pretty beefy. So it might actually, it could actually show a performance improvement. We'll see. Um, okay. Tech search, oh yeah, uh, research, um, FTS searches from the UI. Something I probably should know anyway. Uh, what else? XDCR, Java Trivia, uh, MVS. Okay, yeah, I think those are the four things. So once I have answers to those, then I can start writing some of those things down and putting them in the slides and then from there, create the slides. Okay. It's pr I've made pretty good progress today. So I think I'm going to end a little early today. I uh, appreciate you all hanging out with me. Uh, thank you, uh, one Kevin Griff, for the host. Definitely want to give him another shout out. You should all follow him. Follow him today. Even you, S even you, Surly Dev. I'll even give you a shout out, even though you don't. I don't think you stream yet, although you should, right? What was the one? Code mistakes? Is that what it was? Code mistakes? No. Code Coding by mistake? Code by mistakes with an S. Code by mistakes. Go ahead and follow. Even though Surly's not necessarily doing anything that, with that yet, you want to follow because you want to know when, uh, when Surly starts doing stuff there. Uh, what else? Uh, let's see who we can raid. And I want to know, because I'm going to show up and just uh, start trolling as hard as I can. I can certainly have so many choices here. All these people who are currently streaming. Anybody have any preferences about who we should raid? Who shall we raid? Who, who, who? Uh, I want to see if my teammate is uh, streaming yet as well. We could also raid my teammate. He is currently streaming. I can imagine two dozen live coders seeing a notification and all saying at the same time, revenge! Yes. So we could raid my colleague here, uh, Eric, HTTP Junkie, who is probably doing something with React and JavaScript. Or we could raid, that's what I raided last week, or we could raid somebody else from the team. Any preferences? <laughs> what is Rhymeu8354? Twitch APIs, OAuth tokens. Nipa FX. Java's optional. Oh, some Java stuff but there. It has to be executed for the entire pipeline. Okay. Tutor Exilius. I think that's in German. James Q. Quick. Some Jamstack stuff. We got Source Scoot. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank you for the follow, Aki Vaishi. Aki Vaishli. Late follow, but I appreciate There's it. We're also some XR and Ducky. We're just about to ra raid someone else, so throw your preferences in there. Dan Siegel, uh, currently offline. Oh, looks like he just went offline. Josh Kupka. And supposedly. Some Minecraft. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking, uh, since no one else is speaking up, I'm thinking some Java is in order. We're going to raid Nippa FX. So if you are a subscriber, uh, here's the message for you. You can copy this. Bada bing, bada boom, it's a raid. Copy that little string there and we'll paste it over in Nippa FX's channel when we go and raid. Thank you again for hanging out with me. Um, I will see you again Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. And uh, that's it. I appreciate you all. You all have a good day.
So there's no reason to start computing it. But if we 